Hi right, YouTube, we have ourselves another submission for critique here on the right. And so in this video, that's what we're going to be talking about. Okay, well, here's another drawing from an artist in our Ricks Can Do It Realistic Drawing Group on Facebook. And uh, this is another critique video. Now, first off, I'd like to bring out the, the very positive points here. And that is, this is an excellent drawing, really nicely done. And I think that any artist would be proud to frame it and put it up on their wall and add it to their portfolio because it is certainly a, uh, it's a piece of art. It's really, really good. With that said, uh, I'd like to bring out some points because of the, uh, the subject matter is realistic or photorealism as opposed to super excellent drawing, uh, which this would clearly pass as. This here is a very, very nice drawing of this young lady. However, this here is a photo and this is a drawing, and those differences are clearly obvious. And let me bring out some of the subtle points because they, they don't, for a lot of people, uh, they don't jump out at you as, oh yeah. And those are the things that actually makes a difference between a really, really good drawing and something that could be considered photorealistic. Or even beyond that, if you want to get into the world of hyperrealism, which I don't find necessary, but it is, of course, an art form, and it is a real challenge and something worth going after if that is your interest. Now, before I get to the really, really obvious, because there, there, there is a real obvious difference here, uh, and I think you can see it right off the bat if you look at the eyes. Boom, the face. Uh, they don't look like the same person as opposed to maybe this is the younger sister of this one right here because there's a little difference in the eye over here. Uh, the mouth is a little shorter and perkier than this one being a little wider. And then there's the angle of the nose where this is completely horizontal and this has a slant downwards. We'll get to that in a second. What I want to do is focus more on the area down here the clothing, and then we'll work our way up. Now, right off the bat, if you were to compare these two, what jumps out at you right away that differentiates this drawing from this photograph? And I think you would say, well, the clothing is really contrasty in comparison to the clothing of the uh, photo. If you'll notice, it's a very light tone. You have a uh, really, really light tone, and then you have these mid-tone accents, which are the shadows caused by the wrinkles in the uh, fabric. Well, here you can see that those wrinkles are really, really darkened in. And you can also notice that the threading is also really dramatically drawn in. And when you do this dramatic darkening in, where you make it very, very contrasty in this regard, uh, because contrast is good, but you can get to where it is so, so different between darks and lights, and over here, darks and lights, that uh, it, it then changes the dynamics where you can say, yeah, that's a drawing. I could tell it's a drawing. Uh, because it, it gets to a little bit on an animated. It looks more like it was animated as opposed to it being, uh, what do you call, a photorealistic representation. So let's just bring out one example right here. I'm going to just zoom in a little bit here and I want to bring your attention, for example, to some minor details here, but it, it goes throughout the whole fabric. If you'll take a look just on the side here, You'll notice that you have this dark shading, but it's not super dark, but it's dark. Then you have this light shading here. Then it starts to get a little darker, a little darker. It's gradient. See, gradient is when you, you shift from a, a, a one light tone, and then it starts getting darker and darker and darker and darker until it gets, you know, really dark. 
which in this case doesn't get really, really dark, but you can see that it's a gradual shift in tone. And then it breaks up here. You can see that there's this division right here where it jumps from this darker tone to this lighter mid-tone here. So it's not a straight line through. Okay, and you can see all the way through here, this is a very light shadowing that is being used all the way around the fabric line. Now, let's look at the drawing in contrast, and you can see that it is a really harsh, strong, dark line. It doesn't break up anywhere. There's no gradient whatsoever. It is a line. And when this, when you are using lines in your uh, portraits, you're going to find that it takes on a more cartoon, and I don't say cartoon in a bad way, but it, when you see cartoons or coloring books and so forth, everything is outlined by a dark black line. So you can see the arm has this dark line, and this here has a dark line, and here's a dark line. And, and then if you look, for example, on the strap right here, you can tell it's a strap because it's an excellent drawing, but it's not realistic, you know, as far as photorealistic, because you can see that the uh, shadows within the fabric folds themselves are subtle. You go from a light tone to a medium tone, and it just kind of starts to get darker, darker, then goes lighter, lighter, then darker, darker. Here it pretty much goes dark, light, dark, light, and it's like, let's just, you know, we're going to draw these really hard, uh, and I guess I use the word harsh, uh, because it, the, the contrast is harsh. It, it's not very uh, subtle or, or it doesn't uh, graduate uh, uh, subtly. It, you know, it just uh, really goes dramatically from one to the other. And so you can see this when you go from really dark to light to really dark and you have these very pronounced lines here. Well, you can say, yeah, that's a buckle, that's a strap. Those are folds, but you would not say, yeah, that looks like I'm looking at a photograph. It's clear that it's a drawing of a strap and a buckle and a hook thing and so forth. Really nicely done, but we're going for photorealism in this particular group, and that's what the critiques are, and that's what the video is about, and that's why you clicked on it, I hope, and otherwise the title is misleading. And so you can see the really, really harsh, uh, dark, you know, circular lines, straight lines, deep grooves, the whole bit. Whereas here, it's very soft and very subtle. Now, I invite you to go check out a couple of my videos on drawing fabric. And you'll see how uh, I show you, you go from light, you know, and you're dark, 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 light, lighter, 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 as you're going up and down these little hills within your fabric. So nothing just goes dark, light, dark, light. You, you want those transitions. And I guess that's the word I want to use is transition. You want to transition gradually from your lights to your darks to your lights. Even when you have a dramatic cutoff from the light, you go from light straight into a shadow area. Even there, it's not going to be a straight dark line separating the, the light. There's going to be a slight gradient. It's just going to be micro fine, but you would want to be able to pick those out and you want to be able to blend into that light a little bit so that you can see that it's just not a line, but it's actually a transition from light to dark. Now, with that said, I want to bring out the neck here because that's very important. I think we got the idea about the the clothing, the clothing is awesome. I mean, I really think this is a cool drawing. It's just, we're going for photorealism and you can clearly tell that these were all drawn in uh, as opposed to uh, this right here, which is very, very light. So this does not really match this. It's darker, uh, it's more contrasty and they got solid lines. Okay, we got that covered. All right, let's take a look at the neck. Now in the neck, we can see that from the chin here, we go from a very light tone, and then it goes into this uh, shadow tone down here. Okay, it doesn't go from light to dark, like dramatically. It's, it's a very gradual, if I just, let me get in without blurring here. Let's see how close I can go. Okay, that's about as close as I'm gonna go. Now just, just take a look at it. You can see that you're light here. Then you notice it starts to darken 
right here. So you got this really bright area here. It's a lighter area. It's not paper white. No, no. Not even the teeth would be paper white. Only the gleam in the eye would be paper white. So you have this light area here, but you'll notice about right there, it starts to get darker in tone. Very subtle, very subtle, but that's because the face is moving away from the light. It's, it's coming from up here and moving down. And so what happens is it's getting darker, darker. You'll see that it's starting to get darker here. This is darker than here. This is darker than here. Okay, you put it in zones if you like. And then it kind of goes right into this dark area here and then darker here. And this whole neck has that except for a slight lightness right here, very minor. So you can see it's not a drastic change from here to here, but it's a gradual transition. Now you look at this here, for example, and you can completely see that it's a different story. Yes, we have lighter here, and then it goes into uh, a little darker tone here, which is good. This is great. It's a little more abrupt, but hey, it's pretty good though. But then it goes dramatically into this really dark recess in here. It's like this real drastic crease, and uh, that just does not match the reality here, see? Uh, it's very dark, and it's darker than this area here. And this area here has got too much lightness. This here only has a little bit right there, very little, and it's not even light, it's mid-tone. So we have all this, and then it gets into this really dark, and then again, you can see this very, very dark pressed in area here. So we have this very dark area here that's outlining the face. So anytime you use dark lines to outline anything, the mouth, the neck, the chin, whatever the case may be, well then what happens is it loses that look of realism and it goes into a more animated look, which I refer to as a cartoon type of look, or I should say, uh, what is it when you go to uh, like a fair and they, and they draw people? Well, they, they, of course, they don't draw anything of this super quality uh, because they don't have time. See, they've got to do these real caricatures. That's what, caricatures. So anytime you use lines, you start to move into the realm of caricatures. So here, when you want to do with realism, look, we want to go subtly. So no dark lines here, no dark line here. And this all should be mid-toned here. This tone, this nice uh, mid to darker tone here should be in this whole area here. So that's important. Notice there is no dark line underlining this chin, yet we have that here. So we want to do away with that. You can see the mouth is another thing here. And now we're getting into proportions. Proportions is dealing with the correct widths and heights, the depths, all that stuff is proportion. And you have to get your proportions right on your initial sketch. Very important. We can see here that the mouth is not in proportion. We have a wider mouth here than we have here. This is much narrower. And so the whole effect here is much more narrow. And we can also see that there's a difference in the eyes. Now, this eye here looks pretty close to me. I went like this, and I go, you know, I can tell that it looks pretty good, though this one here is a little more doe-eyed. When I say doe, it's like you have a little deer that a light hits in the eyes, and its eyes go really wide open. Well, you can see that it has more height. Uh, this kid here has had more caffeine than this kid right here. Uh, hopefully this kid's not getting any caffeine, but you know what I'm saying. This one is much more awake than this one is. There's that wider opening of the, or higher opening, excuse me, of the eye. <coughs> Whoa, <coughs> I'm getting dry in the throat here. I apologize. Now here especially is really, really, uh, you can really see that the eye goes way up here, like this big old arch, where this one here has a much more, you know, even arch like this. This one is much more dramatic. It really stands out, and it changes the look. So instead of being the same person, you're kind of got the little sister over here. And because the hair is a little different too, you might say, yeah, that's the kid sister of this one right here, which is fine. Okay, so if you can see that, big difference. Also, you can see that as this eye goes down. Let me see if I can get this back on here again so you can see this. You can see that as this comes down, it has this slope right here. 
But over here, you don't see that. You see it going down all the way just like this. There's no slope. And so that hook right here changes the whole look of the eye. So that's important to keep note of. Make sure your eyelashes are got the same distance from here to here and the same uh, pattern. There's a difference in pattern here. As you can see, this one here kind of got a straight up hooks about here to here, where this one here goes right here and then goes straight across from the center. So there is a difference here as well. Now I did mention the nose and I, I can't go and end this video without bringing that out. Very important. Now as I level these both at the same, at the bottom here, here's what I want to bring out. Take a look at the angle of the nose. It's at an angle. See that? Okay. It's at an angle. But if you look at the drawing, and again I'm going to align this the same way with the bottom straight across, you can see that that one is more of a horizontal to upwards, if anything. It, it is going from here to a little higher here, whereas this one is slanted downwards. And so that's important is that you have to be mindful of the minor details. You might say, ah, that's just a little detail. No, if you want to get photorealistic results, you can't miss those little details. Same goes with the ears, for example. Now I'm going to see if you can tell the difference between these two ears. Take a look at this one. And then take a look at this one. Can you see the difference? See if I can get them in there. And I got the bottoms of these aligned so that it's, it's one for one. And you should be able to see that there is a difference in the way that these ears are drawn in. This has a slope here going up to here. And this one here is pretty much just grilling straight up here at an angle though. It goes up at an angle like this. This has a roundness to it. And then it slopes and starts heading upwards way up here like this. This one never does point up. It stays pointing that way. These, for many people, they don't see those things, and it's so important. As an artist, you absolutely want to make sure you get those details. Now, one last thing. It's very important, and it deals with every critique I ever do, and that is understanding where the light is coming from and the effect that it would have on the subject. Take, for example, here this photograph. Now, by looking at the face and the tone of the face, can you tell from where the light is coming from? Well, if you guessed that it's coming in from this direction, you are correct. And why is that? Well, if you can see that it's very light tone on this side of the face, and then you can see here that it starts to have a shadow. It's a mild shadow, but it's still a shadow because the light is being blocked by the nose and the side of the face here. And so it is a darker tone. You want to make sure that in your drawing that you capture the fact that this side is lighter than this side. No matter how subtle it is, you want that because then it gives you that 3D look. Now if we come over here, can you see where we have an issue? Now that we know that the light comes from here, look at where we have a problem. Number one, right here the shading is the same as over here. So you can't tell that the lighting is anywhere except right here. It, and that's pretty much impossible that it's just going to light here and it's not lighting here unless this person's face is really going down away from the light, which would be difficult and she'd have more of a triangle face. So here's the problem. We see that we have shading here that matches here. We have a little bit more shading than we really need because it was much subtly, subtler here. Uh, that's a tongue twister word for me. And if you look at the side of the nose here, look at all this shading, this dark shading here. This has changed the composition of this nose. It's given it kind of a different shape because you have this uh, shadowing, real dark shadowing here, and then you have this shadowing over here on both sides of the nose. But if you come over here, look what we got. We hardly have anything over here, and we have a little bit here, and then here, and then this part here is open. 
And so you want that opening. We got a little bit right here, but look how drastic that is. It's a little darker, then bright, then darker. And here it's a lot gradual. Look at this here. This is a little darker than here, and this is just a little lighter than both. And then there's even lighter here because of all this light that is shining on her face there. So I wanted to bring that out. Now we can, of course, get into the lips and those other things, but I think we've covered all the main points. Now again, this is an excellent drawing. This is one that I would like frame it. I'd be proud of it. Uh, you can certainly charge people for that. People will pay you good money to draw that. But if you want to get it to photorealism, remember the points that I brought out. No lines in real life. Get away from the lines and make sure that you know where the light's coming from and learn to transition from light to dark by using gradient. That means just gradually go darker and darker and darker when you're going from one area of tone into another. Well, I hope you like this critique video. So please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already, click the notification bell so that you will be informed of all my uploads and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching.